Praise God. God is good. All the time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your goodness. Lord, I thank you, Lord. And I ask that you give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. That the eyes of our understandings are being enlightened. That we know it's the hope of your calling in our lives and in this church. What are the riches of your glory, of your inheritance in us? And Lord, what's the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believe? According to the working of your mighty power, which you worked in Christ when you raised him from the dead. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in the lives of each one of us here today. We give you the praise, honor, and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I've been ministering on He Healeth, actually He Restoreth Our Soul. And we've been going off of uh, Psalm 23. That's what it says. The Lord is, you know, He's my shepherd. But then it goes on and it says, He Restoreth My Soul. And we need to, to have an understanding that in this world that we live in, there, the world shapes the way we think. The, our minds need to be renewed. We need our souls restored. But our, our, uh, the way the world works is that we have, have learned that we have to be dependent on ourselves. We have to be dependent. We're, we're, we're always looking at our resources, looking at our de you know, dependency on other people. But we need to place our dependency on God. He's the one. Amen? And, and that's, the, that's the, the challenge. We have trouble a lot of times trusting God because, I mean, even the songs on the radio, you know, sometimes I have to turn the radio down, I mean, where you don't hear it, because they're like, God, if you don't answer my prayers, if you don't show me any love, if you don't do this, you know, I'll still trust you anyhow. You know, it, it makes God seem so stingy. And, you know, yeah, God, I know you can do anything, but I know, it, you know, you probably won't do anything for me, but, you know, I'll still love you anyhow. And you know what? I, we would love God, and we will love God. But God is willing to help. God, He is a very present help in trouble. Very present help. And, and, um, so there's so many songs on the radio. I was listening to one the other day. I, I, you know, I don't even know the words of it because I just, yeah. you know. But the beat sounds good until you start really listening to, mm -hmm. you know. If, if you don't come through for me, God, I'm still going to love you, you know. If, if, if everything falls apart and my life's a wreck, Lord, you know, I'm just going to trust you. And yes, we do trust him. But God doesn't want us to have that kind of an attitude. He wants us to have a faith-filled attitude of, God, my life might be a wreck right now, but I know you're coming through for me. I know you're my provider. Yes, my bank account may look low right now. My, my, um, my health may not be up to you know, where I want it to be. But God, I know you are my healer. I know you are my provider. And I know, Lord, you are my protector. You're taking care of me everywhere I go. That's the God we serve. Amen? Amen. The other, those other songs I hear, they, they don't put a lot of faith into you. Yeah. You know, they, they sound really religious yeah. and really <laughs> great. But honestly, by the time you're done listening to them, you're like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. You know, whatever happens, but Lord, I'll trust you. No, let's have a, 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 an attitude towards God that, you know, I trust you. I know, God, you are a giver. You are a God who loves me. You're, a, you're my shepherd and I shall not want. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, I, you know, just some of these religious <laughs> thoughts that are out there, I just don't understand them. But, you know what, I'm glad I don't. We need to have a God-sufficiency mentality. A God sufficient. God is sufficient to take care of everything that we'll ever encounter in this life. Trusting God is easy when we understand that He's not a stingy God. He's not stingy. He's not a withholder. The Bible says that all good things come down from the Father of lights where there's no variation nor shadow of turning. Amen? Amen. He's, he's a good God. He gives good things. See, God is an abundant giver who loves and takes care of his children, just like a father. I mean, he's called God the Father for a reason. He's better than any other father out there. Think of the best father, you know, and I know there's there's been some great fathers out there, and there, there are some great fathers, like Teddy, right? <laughs> the little she's like, oh, I love my dad. He's just great. Uh, and he is. He's a blessing. Uh, but, uh, you know, but God's better than him. You know, I mean, as good of a father as he's been, God 
is better. Amen? Which makes you even more excited. Think of the best father and God blows them out of the water. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> you know, um, when Adam and Eve, you know, when God created Adam and Eve and he put them in a garden and he, uh, what did he do? He gave them all the trees and, and all the herbs. I mean, they weren't wanting for anything. Uh, you know, there was one particular tree they should have stayed away from. <coughs> and um, now we're in the predicament that we're in. But, uh, <laughs> But, you know, God, he, he took care of them. He placed them in a garden. The temperature was perfect. Remember that the next time you go north and it's cold. Or, you know, poor Saul, he's freezing up there. <laughs> he's like, come spring, come, right? But, um, you know, or, or when it's real hot. In the garden, of Eden, it was just perfect. God provided Everything, all, all the, the food that they would ever need, they didn't have to work hard for it. He just took care of everything. That's the heart of the Father. That was his original plan until the fall of man. And, you know, and that's God's heart. That's his attitude. I mean, even after Adam and Eve fell, he provided clothing for them. He, he provided, uh, you know, animal skins to, to keep them covered and protected. The Bible says that God is El Shaddai. That's what his name is, which is more than enough. God, his attitude, his personality is just more than enough. He just flows it out. It just oozes out of him. It's um, in Genesis 17.1, that's the way God showed himself to Abraham. It says here that um, Abraham was 99 years old and the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. That word Almighty means Al Shaddai. That's what he said. I am Al Shaddai. I am the all-sufficient one. I'm the one who can take care of the, everything. You may be 99, but you're going to have a child. Amen. Your wife may be, you know, 89 because she was 10 years younger than him, but she's going to give birth. She's going to have a child. I mean, that, that seemed impossible, but not for God. With God, all things are possible. There is nothing impossible with God. The word Almighty God gives the picture of a nursing mother, a mother who's nourishing and taking care of her children, who is more than enough for the, her baby, keeping them warm, <laughs> keeping them protected, and, and providing everything that they need. That's, you know, just the tenderness of God. He's, he's an awesome, almighty God. I like what it says in uh, 2 Peter 1. Uh, two and th verse 2 and 3 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As His divine power has given us some things. Is that what it says? Some things? All, all things. things. His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In other words, whatever you need in this life, God has already provided for you. All things that provide for life. What you're experiencing right now, life. God said, I'm providing everything for you. And godliness. There's nothing that we lack to be able to live godly for Him. He's given us everything. I mean, it, it's God's covered the whole gamut. Everything. The whole thing is covered. He, he is a great provider. Yes. Just, just like some of the best fathers we've met who are excellent providers. Amen. And it's not just about money. It's about caring. It's about being there. It's about going through situations. It's about raising our children, you know. And sometimes we have to discipline our children too. But, you know, we have to provide discipline. Amen. Why? Because we love them. But uh, it's, it's doing it with righteous judgment, though. God, being godly as we're doing it. Amen. Amen. And it says all of these things come through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue. The more we know Him, the more we can believe Him and trust Him. Amen. When, when we get the revelation that God is not stingy, God is not up there going, okay, I know you, know, you need something and I can provide it, but I'm just, just going to watch you suffer through this. That's not the way God works. He's not doing that. We, we just have this picture and the world creates it. <coughs> you know, the Christian community creates it with some of the songs that I just mentioned. You know, I don't know the names of them because as soon as I hear them, I just, you know, I'd rather listen to nothing. 
Then listen to some of those. Hmm. I, I remember years ago, there was a, a woman in my church in another town, and she struggled with this mentality of not enough, not enough, not enough. And, and she was dealing with cancer, and, and she, she just struggled. Think, it was like she just felt like God was withholding from her until everything was just perfect. And, and when, you, when, you, when you have that kind of a feeling or that kind of a thought, it prevents you from being able to open to receive from God. God wants you open. He doesn't want you all tied up in knots. Amen? Amen. And, um, I mean, she dealt with things, you know. At first she dealt with, you know, I, I'm not sure, Pastor, if I have enough faith. I'm not sure if I have enough faith to believe God. But, you know, the Bible tells us in Matthew 17, 20, Jesus said, said to them, because of your unbelief, that's why they couldn't accomplish it. He, he says, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, be removed and from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Why? Because you just believe God. You just need a mustard seed. And I'm here to tell you today, God has given each one of us a measure of faith. That's the way it works. And so we need to trust God. That he's given us. His Word tells us that He's given to each man a measure of faith. Amen. And so we need to believe Him and say, okay, if God gave me a measure of faith, then I have enough. I don't have inferior faith. God doesn't give you inferior faith. Um, the Bible tells us that our faith is a shield, the shield of faith. God didn't give you a shield like that, a little shield. He, he gave you one that could quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. Every single one of them. Amen. It's a big shield. It's a, it's, it's a shield that's big enough to get the job done. Amen. Your faith, the faith that you have in God, that's more than enough <laughs> to accomplish everything that needs to be accomplished. It's, it's awesome. He didn't, none of us have an inferior faith. Just We need to apply our faith. Just trust God where you're at. Amen? Amen. It's, it's not a matter of the size of your faith. It's a matter of the size of your God. Amen. When you have a little faith in a big God, I mean, it's just there's just nothing impossible for you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. But she struggled with that. And then, you know, she had this page of like 100 or 150 confessions. And she went through those confessions several times a day. And, and she didn't think she was confessing enough. You know, uh, not enough confessions. Not enough. You know, you, you, you don't work for your salvation, you don't work for your healing. You just believe God. I believe, therefore I speak. It should be as natural as that. There shouldn't be a, a panic in your confessions. You know, I've got to get this 100, 150 confessions going because I, I know if I confess just enough, God's going to ring that bell up there and, uh, the, you know, the answer's coming. You know, that's, that's not it. The same spirit of faith is I believe, therefore I speak. Amen. We believe, therefore we speak. That's the same, that's the, the spirit of faith. Amen. That's the word of faith. Believing from the heart, confessing with the mouth. Not difficult, not something we need to struggle with. You don't have to count how many confessions you've made. Just relax and trust in God. Trust that God is big enough to make up for any difference. Amen. We've got to have that kind of mentality that, that God is the sufficient one. He's the all-sufficient one. So we need a God-sufficient mentality. Amen. And, and, you know, she was, like, concerned that she was going from this minister over here to that one. She was looking for the, the most anointed one to pray for her because she didn't think that there, there was enough anointing here or enough. You know, God said we lay hands on the sick and they recover. Amen. 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 We, God... It's, it's not about how anointed I am. It's about how anointed He is. Amen. Amen. He's the anointed one, but He can flow His anointing through us. Amen. Each one of us. None of you can do it on your own, but with God, He can flow His power through you. Amen. It's not my power. It's not your power. It's His power. Amen. And it's more, when we believe it's more than enough, it will be more than enough. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in 1 John 2.27, it says, But the anointing which you have received from Him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone should te anyone teach you, but the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true and is not a lie. 
And just as it has taught you, you will abide in Him. It's the anointing. The Bible says you are anointed. If you are a child of God, you have the same Spirit in you that raised Jesus from the dead. That same Spirit gives life to your mortal body, gives health to your mortal body. It's that same Spirit. Remember that song, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead? If He dwells in you, amen, He'll, he'll quicken your mortal body, amen? Quicken it. Glory to God. But these were things she struggled with. And, and you know, and then, you know, she came to me and, and she was like, okay, Pastor, what's your results? And, you know, and I told her, well, I prayed for people and I've seen God heal them. She said, yeah, but this other guy over here, he, he has like, I don't know, 80 something percent results. What's your results? And I was like, well, I never really calculated or anything. Um, but, but, you know, she didn't think that I had enough results. <laughs> so it, it was really tough. It, she, her faith just, she, she just couldn't grasp the, the abundance of God. And the, the, it was, God was more than enough. It wasn't about all her confessions. It wasn't about having this huge faith. It wasn't about all these things. It was about having a little bit of faith in a huge God. The, the God who created the world. The God who created everything. Amen. 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 We gotta get our, our eyes off of us. And we gotta get our eyes on Him. Amen. He's the answer. Amen. That's why the Bible says, Great peace have all they whose mind is stayed on yeah. thee or on him. Because why? You trust in him. See, our minds gotta be off of the problem and be on to the answer, which is God. God's the answer. If we do that, we are not going to struggle with faith. We're going to be good. It's going to happen. Amen? Amen. In, in um, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 5, it says, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as being from ourselves. Amen? But our sufficiency is from God. See, we, we, we can't be looking at self-sufficiency because you are limited. All of us are. We're all limited. But God isn't. So we need to tap into His unlimited supply. And if we have our eyes on us and, and our lack of supplies or our struggles or whatever, we will not be able to receive from God. That's why people struggle getting their prayers answered because... They, their eyes are on themselves. You know? You don't have to pray 10 hours a day to get your prayers answered. God can answer your prayers in five minutes. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't have a good prayer life and you shouldn't be communicating with God throughout the day and loving on Him. What I'm saying is it's not a certain amount of prayer that's good. God's going to say, oh, they prayed enough. Ding! You know, I'll answer their prayer. It, relax. Just have a relationship with God. Just love Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and he'll, he'll be there for you. He'll help you. Amen. I mean, Thomas, we all know Thomas. He's famous for uh, his doubting. You know, we, you heard him, the Bible talk about doubting Thomas. Hmm. Poor guy. The other disciples doubted too. But he got tagged with it. <laughs> you know? Uh, you know, poor guy. <laughs> but he did say this. In, in uh, John, chapter 20, verse 25, it says, The other disciples therefore said to him, we have, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless... See, they believed. Why? Because they saw. And, and he said, um, Unless I see his hand, hand, hands, the print of the, of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, unless I can see it and touch it, and put my hand into his side, he said, I will not believe. I'm not going to believe. See, the thing about it is we've got to believe and trust God before we actually see the answer. That's how prayer works. We pray, believe him while we're praying, and then the manifestation happens. Then, then God moves. People want to believe after the answer comes. That's not the way it works. Amen? We, and I'm not telling you you know, to go out there and write a faith check. You know, 
If it's not in your account, it's going to be a rubber check. But, you know, follow the bouncing ball, you know, follow the bouncing check, and then you'll be in trouble. You know, believe for it to be in your account, and when it's in your account, then write the check. Amen? Amen. We, we've got to place our faith in Him, but we've got to be realistic. We shouldn't be, you know, writing faith checks. And years ago, people would do that. They wouldn't have anything in their account. They're writing out their bills, and they're wondering why they're in worse shape. You know? They need to trust God, not, not be bouncing things. See, see, Jesus is a picture of the Heavenly Father. When you get a picture of Jesus and how He is, then, then you can say, you know what, that's the way God is. Jesus came not only to, to live for us and to die for our sins, but He came to show us the Father. He, 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 because the world saw God as, you know, God. And, you know, He's up there and He's going to judge you. and He's going to do this. And He is a judge. But God judges in love. Amen? Amen. And, um, you know, but Jesus said this. He made this profound statement. Um, in John 14, starting in verse uh, 7, says, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? Maybe he should have been called Doubting Philip, you know? <laughs> poor poor uh, Thomas, man. Uh, he, he who has, Jesus said this, said, He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? He's saying, I'm, I'm a, the identical picture of the way the Father is. The way I love people is the way God loves people. The way I forgive people is the way God forgives people. The Father forgives people. The way I provide is the way God provides. That's why we need to, to really get a picture of Jesus. Understand how Jesus, because if you know Jesus, you know the Father. Amen? Amen? We, we need to, to really get a picture of Jesus. And then, and then the Father won't be a stranger to us. Amen? Because we'll know him. We'll be like, this is, you know, this is the way God is. I mean, I could go anywhere with this message at this point because, I mean, G Jesus, with when, when he was talking about forgiveness and, and the, the prodigal son, I mean, he, he, he showed what the, the father was just running to the son. The father wasn't dissing his son. He ran his son and he provided for him. He gave him sandals and a new new clothing, a ring on his finger. He slayed the fatty calf. All that. He was a picture of God providing. And, and that prodigal son did not deserve it. I'm here to tell you today, we do not deserve the good things that God gives us. We haven't earned them and we don't deserve them. But God loves us. Amen. Amen. And his, his heart is open to us. Glory to God. Amen. I know I'm going all, all over the place here. Amen. But you know, the picture of Jesus, he, 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 picked, he, he shows a picture of an abundance. God is more than a broken nets and sinking boats. I mean, in Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 7, we see where Jesus, he, he's out there by the lake, and, and he's out there, and, and he's like, you know, he talks to Peter, he's like, hey, you know, can I borrow your boat? And Peter's like, okay, sure. So they put him out there, and he's teaching the people. And he said, Peter, cast the nets out there in the, on the deep side of the boat. And Peter's like, well, we've toiled all night. I mean, we got nothing. We got nothing here. And, and this is not the time to go fishing. This is in the daytime. We, we, were, we, we went in the morning when the fish were up close and feeding. Now it's, it's daytime. The fish are out there in the Way out there. But you know what Jesus said? He said, you cast that net out there. And they did. They cast the net out. They obeyed Jesus. Even when it didn't even seem like it was a possibility that anything could happen. And all of a sudden, that net got filled with fish. It, it was so full of fish that, that it was pulling their boat under. They actually had to call friends to, to get other boats. And, and, and they were filling their boats up. And they were practically sinking too. That's an abundance. That's a picture of abundance. And it was, Peter didn't deserve it. They, but they, he, he trusted the Lord, and he obeyed the Lord, and God provided for him. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
It's, it's an awesome, awesome thing. You know, he showed it again when he, in Mark chapter 6, uh, verse 30, when he, um, he was feeding the, the 5,000. He ended up, I mean, they're out there in a desert place, and there is nothing there. No food. There's not a grocery store in sight. You know, there's nothing. It's barren land. And the people were there, and they were hungry. And Jesus looks over his disciples, and they're like, well, should, you know, the disciples are like, we should send them away. And Jesus is like, let's not send them away hungry. He said, you feed them. And they're like, we, we don't have anything. We don't have enough resources to get it done. See, they were looking at their resources. They were looking at what they had. But, you know, Jesus looked at the abundance of God. God is more than enough. Amen? Amen? And so, so Jesus separated them. They, they, they took the fish and the loaves. They split it. And next thing you know, it's multiplying. It's multiplying so much that, you know, they ended up with five loaves and two, um, two fish. And, and with uh, 12 baskets left over. 12 baskets. I mean, that was over an abundance. It wasn't just enough. It was more than enough. Amen. And, you know, here's the thing. You would think they would have learned. But, but when you go to, to Mark chapter 8, verse 1, they're in the same situation, the same circumstances. Jesus comes up to them, and he's like, okay, feed them. And they're like, we don't have what we need. I mean, I can imagine how frustrated he was. Because he had just showed them that, he could, that the need could be met. Just trust the Lord. And... Um, so, so they did the same thing. And they ended up, they had seven loaves and, and a few fish. They ended up with seven baskets, large baskets left over. More than enough. How'd that happen? Because they didn't have what they needed to, to provide that. But God did. God is the provider. God is more than enough. And God is a giver. Amen. That's, that's who he is. That is what he does. Well, if you get this mentality, it'll be easy to trust God, to believe God. God's taking care of me. He, he's given me everything I need to succeed. Amen? Amen? Let's not limit God. Don't limit a limitless God. And then you ask the question, how can one limit God? He's almighty God. He created everything. The whole world, the universe, everything was created by Him. He's limitless. How in the world can we limit God? It's by our lack of trust in Him. It says here in Psalm 78, verse 40 through 42, it says, How often they provoked Him in the wilderness and grieved Him in the desert. Yes, again and again, they tempted God. And it says, They limited the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember His power. They, they didn't remember what God could do. God split the Red Sea for them. God got them out. Of, of, you know, Egypt. He got them out of slavery. They saw miracles. You know, there's curses on the Egyptians. And, they're, and the, the Israelites are blessed. And, and taken care of. And provided for. They come out of Egypt. And they plundered the Egyptians. They left with gold and silver and food and animals. Everything. And, and they end up at the Red Sea. And it looks hopeless. And, and Moses like, you know, God's going to take care of us. And, and what, what happened? God said, no, Moses, you speak to the, you know, you, you part the Red Sea. Lift your hand over that and you part it. And the Red Sea parted. And that wasn't Moses' ability. That was God's. God's ability. God is more than enough to take care of you. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen. And, and so, so they get out in the desert and they're thirsty and they're hungry. And they're like, they're whining and complaining. And God's saying, why? Are you whining and complaining? If, if I could split the Red Sea and you can go over on dry land, if I could take care of you and bring you out with, and with the plunder of the Egyptians, then surely I'm not going to leave you here in the desert to die of thirst and to be hungry. Just trust Him. Amen? Amen. And, um, but they limited Him because of their whining, their, their complaining, and they're not trusting Him. It says in, in Psalm 81, 16, it says, He would have fed them. This is the key word, would have. He would have. Not that he could have. Which he could have. Amen? But he would have. He was willing. He wanted to do it. His, his plan was to do these things. He would have fed them also with the finest of wheat. 
Wow. <clears throat> and with honey from the rock, I would have satisfied you. Well, when I read the Bible, I don't see Moses hitting the rock and honey coming out. I see water coming out. Amen? And, and I don't see wheat growing out of the sand of the desert. But I do see manna coming down. Praise God. So, you know, God wanted them to have honey. He wanted them to have wheat. And instead they got bread and water, which were also miracles. But, I mean, isn't that like prison food? You know, give them bread and water. You know? God wanted them to have wheat and honey. But they limited him. They didn't, they didn't trust him. Unbelief can limit God. See, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can even ask or think. That Above, that's more than enough. Amen? Not, he doesn't do just a, enough. He does more than enough. He wants to take care of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. God is faithful. But unbelief can limit a limitless God. In Mark chapter 6, it says, And he went out from there, this is Jesus, he went out from there to his own country, and the disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, <coughs> and I guess you would say, has, ho, how do you say that in Spanish? Jose? 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 Okay. Jose. <laughs> I guess then we could say this is, this is Judas, right? No, Judas. <laughs> because, because all the J's are H's, right? No. Okay. Um, so what, what's, what's James? Is it hands? <laughs> okay, I'm, just, I'm, I'm playing. But, um, all right. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, and, and Simon, and, and are not these his sisters here with us? So they, they, they were offended at him. But, but Jesus, Jesus, I got that one right, right? <laughs> said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. How Now, it says, he could do no mighty work there, except that he, healed, he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about in the villages in the circuit teaching. So they, they were just... They didn't believe, you know, who's he? He's just a common man. We know his sisters. We know his brothers. You know, he's no different than all the rest of us. That's, that's the, their attitude. They were offended. Who does he think he is? Well, he's Jesus, the Son of God. Amen? He, he's the one who, who miracles flowed. People were healed and delivered and set free and forgiven. That's Jesus. But because of their attitude, they believed that he was a, just a, a, a limited man. Amen? That's, that's how they thought. And the Bible says that he could do, could do no mighty work. It wasn't that he, he didn't want to do it. He, he did heal a few sickly people, but he, he, he was limited by their unbelief. We can limit God by our unbelief. Mark 9.23 says, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. How many things are possible? Oh. All things. Why are we limiting God? All things are possible to him who believes. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly according to all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. See, we've got to realize that there are three levels of living in, on this earth. You can see this with the children of Israel. The children of Israel, when they were slaves in, in Egypt, they never had enough. That was their life. They were slaves. And that's the thing with us. We can be slaves to our bills. We can be slaves to, to credit cards and slaves to all these things. And, you know, we, we can live that lifestyle and just never, ever have enough. <laughs> Or, you know, then God took them out of there 
and he placed them in the desert. And, but they weren't, that wasn't God's ultimate plan. He wasn't, didn't want them to stay in the desert for the rest of their lives. But there was some progression. Now they have enough. The, the, the God provided from the rock water for, the, for them to drink, and for their cattle to, to drink. He provided manna coming down from heaven for them to eat. So, but here's the thing. They had just enough. They couldn't save more for another day. They had to gather up what they could that day. And they never had more than enough while they were in the desert. That was another level of living. And that's the way a lot of times we live. We, we go from paycheck to paycheck and we have just enough to make it through. And praise God for next Friday, right? Woo! We can go out on a date next Friday because it's more than enough. Right? But, but, you know, um, that, that's not God's ultimate plan for us. Yes, God wants to provide our needs, but He wants us to have more than enough. And that's why God was leading the children of Israel to the, the land of Canaan. That, that land was a land flowing with milk and honey. Overflow. More than enough. God, His ultimate plan was to bring them into a, a place of plenty. A place of more than enough. A place that overflows with milk and honey. Amen? Amen. That's, that's God's plan for us. Now we may be in one of these other places right now. But we don't have to stay there. We can trust God. We can believe God and we can go up. Amen? We can believe God so that we have more than enough to be a blessing to other people. Poor people don't support the missions. It's people who have a little more so that they can sell. Amen? Or poor people have trouble providing for other, other people who are struggling. Why? Because they don't have enough. And, and so they're, they're trying to figure out how am I going to get bread on my table? But when they have more than enough, then they can say, you know what? Praise God for what he's done for me. And I have more. I'm going to bless this family over here. I'm going to do this over there. And, it's, and God wants all of us to be in that place where we can be blessers. Amen? We, we have an abundance where we can just be a blessing. I'm going to be a blessing to this person. I know that they've been wanting this. And, and you know, God's provided such a blessing for me. I'm just going to bless them. I'm going to, sh you know what? I'm going to shock them. I'm going to be like, you know what? They're, they're not even going to see it coming. Wouldn't, that be, wouldn't it be great to be a blessing like that? They're not even going to see it coming. Just surprise. Amen? I've had a few people in my life who have done that in, for me. And it, it, it just blows my mind. And I praise God. Because God, God put it on their hearts to do that. But they had to be a willing vessel as well. Amen? And... And they have to have resources to be able to do it. And that's the way God wants it to work for all of us. Amen? Amen. This is the last scripture, and then we'll be going. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 11, it says, But I say, but, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. So let each one Give as he purposes in his heart. Not grudgingly. In other words, you, you, you have a heart, man, I'm just, I'm a giver. We live to what? Give. That's, that, that should be our, our motto. We live to give. We want to give. Our God, our Father is a giver. He's a blesser. And we want to be like Him. We want to be a blesser. We want to be a giver. Amen. Amen. So we don't do things grudgingly. We're not stingy. And gr God's not up there being grudging. He's not begrudging us blessings. Let's put it that way. He says, or of necessity, oh, I'm giving because I have to. No, you're giving because you want to. You're giving because you love God. You're giving because you love people. Amen? That should be our heart. Amen. It says, for God loves a cheerful giver. It doesn't say a fearful giver. And it doesn't say a tearful giver. It says a cheerful giver. Amen. In other words, you just have a, an attitude. There's just something about you. You know what? I'm just a giver. You know? I just want to be a blessing. And that's something I'm working on more in my life. I want to be more of that. More of a giver. That you always having... Now look at this. It says that you always having all sufficiency in all things. 
may have an abundance. In other words, you're not giving out of your lack. You're giving out of an abundance. Why? Because you have that kind of a heart. May have an abundance for every good work. I see something that needs done over here, I'll bless them here. I see something that needs done over there, I'll bless them there. Someone's struggling here, I'll bless them. Why? Because I have more than enough. Amen? It says here, he has dispersed the broad. This is God. He has dispersed the broad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies, see, it's God who supplies seed to the sower. He's the one who gives you what you're going to sow in the first place. And it says, and bread for food. He, he takes care of everything you need. It says, supply and multiply the seed that you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality. In other words, you're blessed so you can be a blessing. That's what that means. You, you have more than enough. Why? So you can be a blessing. Someone, you know, you go out with someone, you know, buy their meal for them. Bless them. Amen? Amen. Or, or, or you see that something going on in their life, you know, try to help them. Amen. I appreciate uh, people like that, too. I mean, wow. I, I've been on the receiving end of it, and I've been on the other side, too. But I've been on the receiving end more. I need to change that around. I need to be more on that giving end. Amen? And, and I'm believing God for more so I can do more of that. Amen? And you should be believing God for more as well. So you can not build a bigger barn and, and build a bigger castle, but so you can be a bigger blessing. Amen. That's, that's the, what it is. See, we're not the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is where everything flows in and there's no, nothing going out. We, 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 we have a... It comes in, but it also flows out. Amen? Amen. We're alive. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, God is El Shaddai, the more than enough God who meets all of our needs according to His riches and glory. Bottom line is this. Let's trust Him. Amen. 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 Let's keep our eyes on Him because everything flows from Him. Don't look at your resources. Look at God. He's the one. Amen. Amen. He's the one who will take care of you. He, he loves you. If He didn't if he wasn't stingy on saving you, if, if, he, if he gave his very best by sending Jesus, he's going to take care of everything else. Everything else is on the table. I told Norma this. Well, I, I told the church this. If, if, a husband, if a husband is willing to lay his life down for his wife, for his family, then it, it leaves everything else on the table. You know? He should be willing to be open to being a blessing to her. To her in many other ways. I mean, that's why we have a dog, by the way. Because I wasn't looking for a dog. But Norma was like, can we please have a dog? I was like, oh. okay. You know, it wasn't too hard. When she showed me the cute little puppy, you know, uh, it, it, you know, she, she, she did one of these things to me. She had the puppy right here. And she's like, you know, how do you say no to that? You know? <laughs> but I love her. And I love our little... Uh, for for baby, yes. for baby. amen. And uh, you know, new new addition to the family. But I just want to encourage you today that you know, keep your eyes on God. He will take care of you. He's got such a generous heart. He wants to provide for you, and he wants to open up avenues of blessing. But we also want to be like him. Let's let's be givers. Let's be people who reach out to people and love people. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for everything you've done. You are an awesome God. Lord, you, you don't withhold anything from us. Lord, you, you, you're the one who's more than enough for us. Lord, if it says it and promises it to us in your word, we will trust and stand on the word of God and believe you for it, Father. Because your promises are awesome. Your promises are are a blessing, and you always keep your word. You're an incredible Father. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. I thank you, Lord, that our minds are being changed, Lord, that, that we are beginning to get a, a God-sufficiency mentality. Amen? That our souls are being restored and to that. And so we give you the praise, honor, and glory for it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now go out and be a blessing. Amen. Shake hands. Show yourself to be friendly.
with a smile. Amen? Amen. God bless.